It was the night before Thanksgiving, and I just remember my husband and I lying in bed, holding hands, tears streaming down our faces, and just trying to deal with this and understand how we were going to cope. You know, how strange is it that at 38, I knew what I was going to die from? My name's Colleen. I've been living with pulmonary arterial hypertension for 15 years. My first recognized symptoms of pulmonary arterial hypertension after the birth of my second child, I was short of breath. I couldn't take a walk with people without needing to stop. I couldn't make it to the top of a flight of stairs. And I was confused and upset that I was feeling that way um, because I didn't understand what the issue was. I went and talked to my um, general practitioner who diagnosed me with asthma. And I continued to go back every few months over the period of two and a half years where we would increase therapies for other diagnoses, which I learned that I didn't even have. So then I went to a cardiologist who took my family history and did a physical. I had to convince the cardiologist to move forward with an echo because I looked normal and I sounded normal when I was sitting. He came back into the room. He said, uh, you know, Colleen, I'm really sorry. This, I believe, is pulmonary hypertension. The diagnosis has really impacted our family and our children. There are so many things that we have not been able to do. Prior to my diagnosis and prior to my symptoms, I took a lot of things for granted. When you're short of breath and trying to watch your son play baseball, but you can't even make it to the sidelines of the field because there's a slight incline, it was devastating. We went to Disney, but I was too sick to fly. So my husband flew with the kids and I sat on a train for 24 hours so that I could spend the time with them. At that time, I was on my scooter. We went to the medical aid station about every hour because I was going through oxygen that quickly. Over these years, there's been a tremendous disconnect between what I would like to do and what I'm able to do. And I will say that is something that I think so many of us wrestle with because you truly do need to open a new chapter and you need to try to be optimistic about that chapter. One way I've done that is to become involved. I do whatever I can to support other patients. I enjoy that. I love to be with them, to see them, to go to lunch, to advocate with them, and to become involved in that way. So I try to keep busy, and that brings me hope.